In this video, we're going to talk about a homotopy between two paths in a topological space. So last time we defined a path between two points A and B in a topological space X with topology T to be a continuous function gamma whose domain was the unit interval of all real numbers between 0 and 1 and uh, it outputs a point in your topological space uh, such that gamma of 0 is A, that says A is the initial point on the path, and gamma of 1 is B, which says B is the ending point on the path. And I had a little picture uh, just to give us an idea of what gamma does. Again, take a real number between 0 and 1, and it outputs a point in your topological space. Uh, here, notice, if you watched the previous video, I used T as the input for the path. Now I'm using S as the input for the path. So I will use S as the path's input for this entire video. So say that we have two paths, gamma naught and gamma 1, that have the same starting point, A, and the same ending point, B we will study an interesting way to attempt to associate these two paths to each other. Let this pretty chessboard that an old student made and sent to me be the complex plane, or R2 if you like. The red string is a path gamma naught, and the blue string is a path gamma 1. First align the yellow string with gamma naught, then we use the yellow string to visualize a way to continuously deform the red string gamma naught into the blue string gamma 1. By continuously deform, I mean we can't lift it or detach it. We can identify each shape that the yellow string became as a path from A to B. So we'll give it a name, gamma sub t. Uh, again, the input variable is s, and it outputs a point in my topological space. And here, we choose to index each of the different paths, in other words, the different shapes that the yellow string assumes. We're going to index it by a number t, and t is also going to be a number between 0 and 1, some real number between 0 and 1. Now this defines a family of paths, so a set of paths we'll call gamma t. And uh, what does this family do? It continuously deforms gamma zero into gamma one. Any such family is what we'll call a homotopy between gamma zero and gamma one. Maybe specifically right now from gamma zero to gamma one. So here are the important features from the demonstration that will allow us to rigorously define a homotopy. Number one, when s equals zero and t varies through the interval zero to one, we are at the point a. In other words, all the paths in the homotopy start at a. Number two, when s is one and t varies through the interval from zero to one, we are at the point b. In other words, all the paths in the homotopy end at b. Number three, when t equals zero and s varies through zero to one, we are on the path gamma zero. So gamma zero is the first path in the homotopy. Number four, when t equals one and s varies through the interval from zero to one, we are on the path gamma one. So gamma one is the final path in the homotopy. And number five, if, you, if you're given a specific s and t, two real numbers between 0 and 1, then gamma sub t of s is just some point in your topological space. And we're going to look at this in a little bit more detail. That idea that we're associating an s and a t to a point in our space, we can think of that as a function. And so it takes inputs in the Cartesian product of the unit interval with itself, 0, 1 to 0, 1. I've tried to color these. So the first copy of 0, 1 is going to be my s values, and the second copy of that interval is going to be my t values. And uh, the way that we're going to define our function, f of s comma t is just going to be gamma sub t of s. And so this is going to allow us, these five things are going to allow us to kind of rigorously define what a homotopy is. So let x t be our topological space, pick two points a, b in the space, and let gamma naught and gamma 1 be two paths from a to b. A homotopy from gamma naught to gamma 1 is a continuous map f who takes inputs from the unit interval cross itself to our topological space is where it outputs, such that the following things are satisfied. f of 0 comma t is a for all values of t from 0 to 1. f of 1 comma t is b for all values of t between 0 and 1. f of s comma 0 is gamma naught of s for all s's between 0 and 1. 
f of s1 is gamma 1 of s for all s between 0 and 1. Now you should compare these to the first four things that we wrote down when we were looking at what the homotopy should satisfy based on the video from before. And you see that we're just using a little bit different notation to express those same ideas right here. Now, since f is assumed to be continuous, for a fixed input t, we have that f of st is a path from a to b. Thus, we may refer to each point f of st as just gamma t of s. In other words, what I'm saying is f of st is equal to gamma t of s, and that's going to be the point in x on the path gamma t at time s. So the homotopy just picks out points along our curves in the family. And that's what my picture is trying to illustrate uh, over on the side. In that case, that particular green point is the output of this function, f of st. So it picks out some point on one of the curves in our family that deforms gamma naught into gamma one. Let's take a look at some concrete examples, and again, also maybe using some of the notation. You know, sometimes these intuitive uh, demonstrations with videos and strings and stuff, that's all cool. You get the idea of what a homotopy should be, but like, how do you use the language of math to do something with it? So that's what we're going to try to look at in uh, this example and the next one. So let's let x be the complex numbers, and we'll give it the usual topology. In case you're not super familiar with that, I'm using the modulus, which you can think of as like the distance function on R2, on the plane. Now, any two paths in the complex plane are homotopic, I claim. And we're going to see that this is a consequence of the complex plane being convex. And that means that any line segment, the, the line segment, sorry, between any two complex numbers, that whole line segment is contained in our set, which is the complex plane. It's contained in our space. So if you can draw a line segment between two points and that line segment's in your space, then you're convex. So let's let A and B be any two complex numbers. And let's say we've got two paths, gamma naught and gamma one, between A and B. So something like this picture over here. We're going to fix an S between zero and one. So hold S constant right now in your head. I think S assumed a specific value. And uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna think about well, what are the points on the red curve and the blue curve that that particular S picks out. And what we maybe remember from like a calculus three class is we can get um, the parametric equations of a line that connects one point to another. And that line segment that connects these two points to each other, it has an expression that looks like this. One minus T times gamma naught of S, my starting point, plus t times gamma 1 of s, my ending point, where t gets to be any number between 0 and 1. And so there's our line segment. Now this says that each t between 0 and 1 yields a point on this line segment. And so let's name these points. We're going to name them gamma sub t of s. So to put this together, we're saying that gamma sub t of s is equal to our line segment here. That's particular t picks out a point on this line segment. And now what you should think about is as t varies from zero to one, we see that we're moving along this line segment from gamma naught, my red curve, to gamma one of s. Now consider the same equation, so gamma sub t of s is one minus t gamma naught s plus t times gamma one of s. But now what I wanna think about is what if I think about t being constant, so fix t. And now let's think about s being allowed to vary between 0 and 1. So we see that this equation uh, is a path from a to b. So let's talk about why. Well, first of all, it's continuous because it was part of the homotopy. Um, or for, I'm sorry, it's a line segment. Of course, it's continuous. <laughs> anyway, so why is it a path from a to b? So we need to make sure that when I plug in 0, I get a. And so let's think about well, when we plug in 0 for s, uh, gamma naught of 0 is A, and gamma 1 of 0 is uh, also A, right? The two paths start at the same point. And if you just distribute and combine like terms, you see that works out to A. So that's good news. And we also need to make sure that when we plug 1 in for S, that we get B. And so let's just do that algebra very quickly. Remember, gamma naught of 1, gamma naught ends at B, and gamma 1 ends at B. So we will substitute B in for both of those. And when we distribute and do that algebra, we get B. So we've, we've verified that gamma t is in fact a path from A to B. So thus we've shown that this family of paths, gamma t, where again, t is any real number between zero and one, 
Those are all paths from A to B. And from our line segment argument, we saw that uh, each of these, uh, sorry, this family pulls gamma naught to gamma one, like along those line segments. If you thought about it, you had a line segment for each value of s. So that's what's gonna allow me to visualize pulling the red curve into the blue curve. And so the equations for our path, gamma t, in other words, uh, again, what comes from those uh, line segments, the equation of the line segments, that's what allows us to write a formula for our desired homotopy. So, you know, once you've given what the family gamma t looks like, that is your homotopy, but maybe for practice writing it in this kind of function notation, capital F of ST is going to be one minus T times gamma naught of S plus T times gamma one of S. So we just uh, demonstrated that any two paths in the complex plane should be, uh, any two paths in the complex plane that connect uh, the same points <laughs> should be homotopic. Let's look at an example about what can go wrong. So now let's let our set X be the complex plane, but we'll delete the origin. And if you'd like, you can think about it's the, the real plane, the Cartesian plane, you know, minus the origin. And again, give it the same topology. I placed the king at the origin to help visualize how we should treat the whole. It looks like any way that we try to continuously pull gamma naught into gamma one just gets snagged at the whole. Intuition says these curves probably aren't gonna be homotopic to each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the unit circle and we're going to split it in half. And we're going to let the top half have equation uh, determined by e to the i pi s. And by the way, the reason I'm really using complex numbers here is just so sometimes curves are easier to describe here. So in this case, this exponential is the nice top half of the unit circle. And the bottom half is going to be gamma 1, and it's going to be e to the minus i pi s. And in a picture, here we are. And what I want to consider these as is, well, these are both paths from one plus zero y to minus one plus zero y. And I've denoted both of those points in green. And what I claim, just like in the video, the hole at the origin that I've also tried to draw in the picture, but that hole in my space that prevents us from being able to continuously deform, in this case, gamma naught, the top exponential into gamma one, which was the bottom blue exponential. But in order to show that there's no homotopy between these two, using only the definition of what a homotopy is, that's kind of hard. So this is an instance where the video made it look intuitive. Yeah, you can't get past that hole. You get stuck, it's snagged. But trying to put this to symbols is kind of a hard problem. And for instance, you know, we might try a proof by contradiction. And maybe we assume that you have a homotopy uh, F that maps into the complex numbers minus the origin, our space. And what we would try to do probably to get our contradiction, we would probably try to show that, well, one of the paths crosses through the origin. There exists some S star T star such that F of S star T star gives you the origin. And that's of course a contradiction because the origin is not in our space. That can't be an output. And again, just to recap, you know, the idea would be to try to show that for any homotopy gamma T between gamma naught and gamma one that goes into C, at least one of those curves has to pass through zero so there's no such homotopy uh, into the complex numbers minus the origin, right? You have to have the origin in order for those two curves to be homotopic. And so this suggests that we need some more tools for analyzing when two paths are or aren't homotopic to each other. And the next tool that we're gonna consider in a future video is an equivalence relation on the set of all paths between A and B.